What do you think about the state of YouTube as a platform right now? I think it's a, I think it's, there's a really positive take on it and there's a really negative take on it. And I think both things can be true at the same time. The really positive take is I think, and this is the negative take as well, new, YouTube has no shape right now. If you remember back when you were doing your thing, when I was doing my thing years ago, YouTube even had its like creators they put up on billboards yeah. and they had like, this is what YouTube is about. It's yeah. these kinds of creators represent us as a platform and this is who kids aspire to be like. And I think YouTube necessarily gave that up. Like these guys are causing too much fucking trouble. We can't align ourselves with them. Mm -hmm. We have to be like Google. We don't pick favorites. This is just mm -hmm. a place where people post videos. And it was a little bit of a bummer. Like the support for creators pulled back a little bit, but I think from a business perspective, it was necessary. So because of that, as a result of that, YouTube is more fragmented than it's ever been. Like, what is it? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of negative. I liked it when YouTube represented something and it doesn't now, it's fragmented. But what's beautiful about that is I see creators that have 100,000 subscribers, some less, with a dedicated audience about really, really esoteric subject matter. Yep. And I love that. I made a video with these guys out of the UK and what they do, their channel's big, but they have a channel where they only talk about retro video gaming devices. <laughs> How the that. fuck is there enough content yeah. for you to fill a channel about retro video gaming devices? Their channel's huge, their audience is devoted. Cool. They've written a coffee table book like, and I love that. I, I think, think that's, that's a, the, I think that's the coolest thing. My, my server at Lavo last night, we had this server all night and he was, he was the, the nicest guy. Uh, his name was Sean. And at the end of the night, we got into like a deep conversation with him and he, and I was like, so what do you, what do you like to do outside of the server? And he's like, well, oddly enough, like you, he's like, I'm, I'm a YouTuber. And, I, and you know, <laughs> more fun. and more people say that nowadays, you know, what's your content? He goes, I'm actually the best pinball player in the world. The best pinball player in the world. He's like, like I win every competition. You get a selfie and if, with him, or I would. I want it. I yeah, want it. I know his name. I, I messaged John Schwartz and and said, "Yo, I'm I'm really a big fan of Sean." And I was asking him, you know, what's your favorite? He said, "There has been and never will be a pinball game as popular as the Adams Family." Pinball That's a game. great pinball game. That's what he said. Great he said it's, he said it's the biggest thing that he said. Second was Twilight Zone, which I liked. I, also, Rod a great Surly, pinball. Yes, he I knew can his close shit. my eyes and picture that game. I can picture yeah. the layout. But it's but it's but it's funny because we very much here on this show and 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 you know at this in this type of creation space uh, commit ourselves to trying to create content that is applicable to the masses. Right. We want it's a mistake. As ma it's a mistake. Artistically, creatively, it is a mistake. As a business, I agree. I agree. It is a it is a story of success, and I and I the only. I came from, a, obviously, from a very different world. I was smoking crack, not watching Casey Neistat, right, when I came in. So the only model I had for success was my best friend. I just looked at what he did, and I said, okay, this is how you do. But now when I look around the landscape, especially, you know, on YouTube, and I see these niche channels, where, by the way, they're able to drive a tremendous Huge. amount of sales Huge. volume off 100 or 200,000 subscribers because the people are so passionately involved with everything they put out. And I'm, I will say... I am extremely envious of that. Like if I could put out a Twilight Zone only a Twilight Zone only podcast and every episode we just see, that's why. You see what he does? You know, my favorite He wouldn't he he maybe he maybe right? thinks yeah, he made, yeah, see yeah, yeah, yeah. he doesn't like it. He made me think that type of stuff was uncool. My no, favorite it's not, it's not, it's my just... favorite YouTuber <laughs> is this guy who's probably fifty years old. He's British and he takes like these really narrow subject matter from World War II. Okay. And makes an eight to 10 minute mini doc about it where he just uses sourced footage, like free unlicensed footage. Like different battles? He goes way more specific. They'll talk about like the kind of bullet used in a kind of gun at that battle. Cool. Hundreds of videos. They're evergreen. I, like mm. he's the only thing I watch. You open up my feed and it's just his content. It's like something Felton, Mark Felton Productions. Got it. And he has like his terrible intro and he's like, do, 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 Mark Felton Productions. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's fascinating. It's way better than what's on the History Channel. How many views do those videos get? Okay, some have 100,000. Some have like 15 million. Yeah. Whoa. Because like, if you need to know about what Hitler's <laughs> bunker was like the last week before he died, this one video is the best video at that. Well, that's al those also the thing, even with these niche channels, like the retro gaming console channels, I'm sure they have every one in yep, 10 yep, yep, that yep. goes Pops. fucking yeah. nuts. Because these these sub the subject matter is interesting. 
And, and some of them are kind of universal. I'm curious about Hitler in his bunker. It's a that's, great video. That, that's wild. When people come up to you and they say, Casey, I'm thinking about being a YouTuber. What advice could you give me, a young up and coming creator, if I wanted to do what you've done for so many years, Casey? What advice do you give me? I hate it. My response is always why. <laughs> no, like, let's it's, a, it's, if you, it's a great response. If you ask me that question, yeah. then, like, let me, like, that's a big question. You're that's, asking yeah. me to do work right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? And if their answer is anything other than, like, I you love know, it. I, there's nothing I love more than yeah. making videos or, like, I grew up here and nobody knows about X. You know, like there's some genuine passion, whether it's artistic or, or sharing a perspective, anything other than that. If it's like, if the word Mr. Beast is anywhere in their answer, <laughs> my response is don't. Yeah. Or prime or yeah, any of that. Yeah, yeah. Because so, like that's, so, that can't be the mission. I, I, get, I got asked this the other day in the airport. I get, I get asked this question sometimes and it is difficult because like I, I too want to stress how difficult it can be if you don't love it. I, this kid came up to me, you know, what, what advice can you give me? I said, he's like, I, I, I want to I want to make videos. I'm an up and coming guy. I said, okay, how many videos have you made? He goes, well, none, none yet. I'm thinking about starting. I said, all right, kid, you're what, 19, 20? Give yourself 10 years. Give yourself 10 years at this craft, making videos, posting them online, getting made fun of for at least five of those years. Easy and then five. maybe at the end of 10, maybe you'll have a little bit of success. Consistency for me is my general advice for these people, but you are right. It needs to come from a place of like, kind of, this is what I love. It's yeah. just how I'm wired. Patience is the other thing I say because it's, it's a little bit of a fuck you answer. Nobody wants to hear that. No, no. Like, what's it's, the it's one piece? Horrible. Casey, what's the one horrible. piece of advice? I, like, I don't have time. I don't want to stop my skateboard. I just want to roll yeah. past you yeah. and give an answer. <laughs> it's always like patience. Yeah. Do you have 10 years to commit to this? And they look at you like you've three heads. Yeah. You're like, yo, I thought Mr. Beast said, and it's like, nah. <laughs> it's like, that dude's going. been making videos since Mr. he was Beast nine. Mr. Beast say Logan Paul's name for 24 hours. <laughs> that, I, not, I like Jimmy is my favorite example. He's like, no one's done what he's done. And you look at his first videos and it's like, what resources did he have? A shitty webcam. Yeah. And he sat there and watched it's every day, bro, for 12 straight yeah. hours. He deserves whatever success yeah. he wants in life. Way yeah. more, way more than that. 12 hours of it's every day, bro. <laughs> God bless that man. My, my, my God advice. Bless God bless that man. My advice to them is always to, uh, to just befriend a popular YouTuber. And just like become friends. Yeah, yeah. And then, it's like, yeah, pick and, one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell him you should start a podcast. You know what I mean? Get the chair right next to him. Hey, guys, if you like that clip, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to see more zany clips, click the video right here. <laughs>